Wishbus USA. And joining me is still, I know, I know, I've said his name like a couple of times. You oh. should know it by now. His name is Sydney. Oh, oh. Just in case you guys are just tuning in right now, and he will be helping me. Well, I guess I'm more inputting my questions while he's asking his own. Yes. Haskell. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. It stuttered. You stuttered. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said that on purpose. She got jokes. She got jokes. <laughs> <laughs> So, good friend. I wonder how many good friends you have. A, lot of, a few. He's dropping, sort of, not really. Yes. But um, for <laughs> <laughs> the wishers who do not know you, please give them a little bit of background information. All right. Uh, my name is Haskell Jackson. Born and raised in the beautiful Los Angeles, California. A native. Huge Laker fan. <laughs> Don't forget that. Um, went to a lot of the local schools. Crenshaw High School. Went to Cal State Northridge. Um, yeah, just, I, I, these are my stomping grounds. I do music. Mm -hmm. I've been in music for over 27 years. Since, um, and you're 28 now? Yeah, I'm 28 <laughs> years old right now. So I've been doing music since I was, uh, yeah, for 27 years. I started in college in 92. Um, mm -hmm. um, started with a group called Straight Vocals that I created. It's an acapella group. And we got our first record deal with Motown. Um, did an album with Motown with some of the greats, Smokey Robinson, Temptations, Boys to Men, um, a lot of the greats. And um, from there, from singing, I ended up, I started writing. Okay. And then from writing, I started producing. And then from producing, I started developing and then so on and so forth. It's so it was, a, it was a journey for me. That kind of journey? It was that kind of journey. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it, was, it was like some it downs. Was like a, it was <laughs> a lot of... Tell them the real, yeah, how it is in the business. It was a lot of downs <laughs> because I had to, you know, I didn't have the money to get any lessons and, mm -hmm. and I didn't really real, I didn't understand how to get, get into the business the way I, I wanted to. Right. So I had to learn everything myself and open up a manual and learn how to produce, um, save my money, all the little money I was getting to buy my own equipment. So it's like ground root. I just stayed faithful to it and I kept people around me that were um, were honest people with integrity. Right. And that meant everything. And I, I think at the end of the day it was because God wanted me to be in the position Definitely. I'm in now. Definitely. Yeah. So you said you started with singing and yeah. then you started writing. Are there any that we write like songs that are... Yeah. In yeah, so uh, I'll, give you, I'll give you some artists. So I've worked with Chaka Khan before. Okay. Um, I've worked with Kanye West. Mm -hmm. I actually ran Kanye West's foundation for six years. Oh, okay. Alongside his mother, Donda West. Um, she had, unfortunately, she ended up passing away. But during that, that, that time, I was able to reach thousands of kids through music and uh, music education. So from there, um, Smokey Norfolk, um, Donnie McClurkin is one of my clients right now. Mm -hmm. Um, man, I, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty long list. I, I'm very grateful to have worked with some amazing, amazing people with solid talent. And not, right. you know, obviously, you know, um, auto-tune is great right now. But back then, <laughs> it wasn't auto-tune. You had to pretend you had to, to auto-tune your auto. <laughs> yeah. you, have to be you had to automatically <laughs> tune yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, you know, computers can do it for you, so... I, I come from that era where you had, you had to really practice your gift and until you perfected it, and then you get an opportunity to record. So, you know. So what are your thoughts on the recent um, music group that we have? Like, we have a variety of music that's yes. coming in right now. So what are your thoughts on the differences between that and from when you began? Um, you know, I don't want to date myself, but a lot of it is... Um, Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, I respect it because it, you have to start somewhere. Right. I'll put it like that. You have to start somewhere. So I, I, I'm not a really hard judge unless I work with them, and then I'm a really hard judge. But if I'm on the, on the, on the outside looking in, I really um, look at the artists, and I try to see where they can end up. Mm -hmm. Because you have a lot of artists that start off in, in one place, and they may end up 
doing really well because you gave him an opportunity. So I try not to be so quick to judge. A lot of the music I don't like, <laughs> to be honest. Um, there's some that I could dance to and get down to, but you had real music back in the day, like Motown set a, set a stage for, for real musicianship, the right. love of the arts. And, um, and I just, I come from that era. So I try to, I try to match both eras. Okay. I try to do the young music as well and put some colors in there and some chord patterns and add a bridge. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll add a, a bridge structure. to a trap song. <laughs> real structure. <laughs> some real structure. Real you right. know, and then, um, so I'll add a lot of the things that I've learned to a new school way to just keep relevant, just stand relevant and always reinventing myself. I was just about, about to ask you too, if you think since um, music does, do you believe that music changes with the age also? And the age of a person or the age or of like time? just the age of time, like music adapts to how the age or the how the society is. Absolutely. And how how I guess how much of the original music that could, from the when I say original music, it's the one that you began with. How much of that should you put into the music in order to stay relevant, like in the society itself? Because right now, a lot of youngsters like the you know, the trap music, the yeah. whole bopper songs. Yeah. <laughs> That's not gonna last. Anymore. I know. And I believe it because, you know, you can only bounce your head to a song. Yeah. Well, it's, three it's, words. It's, a, it's a trend. <laughs> it's, it's a trend. So right? do you think, mu like, the original music that you began with should be incorporated in something like that, but still have its own, like, yeah. still stand as its own? Absolutely. I think I, I understand it more because I have a daughter. Okay. I think, you know, if you if you don't have kids, it'd be very hard to understand this generation. Right. But because I have a daughter, she loves all types of music and some trap she loves, some trap she hates. But um, I, when I see her light up, I'm like, There's, there must be something mm -hmm. beautiful about that for her to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And I have to respect that, you know. But then at the same time, I have to teach her where, where a lot of these beautiful sounds, samples, where they come from. Yeah. Because <laughs> a lot of the music they're, they're playing, it, it's a lot of it is sampled. Right. And so you play something, that came from a vinyl somewhere. Right. They yes. grab that sample, and so I show her. I, I, sometimes I put her through a little test where I'll say, what do you think this, this the origination of this song came from? And she's like, that's their song, Dad. Nobody redid it. And I play <laughs> them the original <laughs> from like the Temptations or the Stylistics, or, and it blows her mind every time. She's like, oh, my God. So I'm like... We're relevant too. Because <laughs> you're using and our that, music. And that's what Behind so, the Groove is. Yes. You know what I mean? Exactly. That's what it is. So it's, 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 we're relevant regardless of whether we try. Because beautiful music that you do with your heart and your soul is going to sustain. Regardless. Yep. It's going to sustain. Yeah. It doesn't matter the date or time. Right. It is. Timeless, crazy. timeless music. Yep. Last yeah. Forever. Timeless music. Would Love. Like Love is the, is the key, that, actually. Yes. Definitely. I mean, just as all of the yes. previous guests has entered and said, don't go in the music for the money because Never. money comes and goes. But if you begin with your heart yeah. and make music because of love, then that will definitely withstand time because yeah. no matter how old you get, you will always have love. But you can't say that about money. Right, right. That's so. a good statement. I, I completely agree. Um, love doesn't buy groceries. No. Yes. So you got to be on top of your game. <laughs> you got to be on top of your game when it comes to, when it comes to business. Right. So it's like, you. I, I feel like you have to go into it both ways, where you do it because you have a passion for it, but there's the the business end where you got to do it and you got to know how to do it, so that you can buy groceries. And because I've been in many situations for the love of it, and I wasn't able to eat. So I completely get that because you're going to have a watered down um, content if you don't do it for the love of it but then you're going to have a watered down content that doesn't sell if you don't know the business of it so it's 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 both sides it's you a have little to dabbling of both you got to have both sides so you do have to know both sides but it's important that you incorporate what your heart feels too absolutely i mean it's important yeah i get the whole Love does not buy the grocery. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah. And I It'll mean, it'll make I've, you want to buy groceries. 
Right. It's true, but you walk in there, you go in your pocket, hey, oh, man. where's You're not the cash? taking love coupons. <laughs> yeah, it's coming up with lint. <laughs> lint every time. But I feel like it is connected in a way that... Absolutely. Even if you're not completely aware of the business, but yeah. you know where music originates and you know what will actually, just by feel, because yes. emotions pulls. Yes. Like you can feel a song and you can tell that, oh, this song is going to last. Like you Absolutely. can feel that. So Absolutely. if you can invest in those, then I feel like even if you don't know the business too well at the time, Absolutely. you'll still be able to buy groceries. And survive. Buy groceries. I think I think because I'm a creative, um, I used to go into I, my approach was always just jump in head first. That was always my approach. I was young, I didn't have a lot of wisdom behind it until I got older and I realized like, God, I'm I'm hungry. I haven't eaten in like two days, and but I got all this great music. So I had to put myself around people that was able to mentor me and help me understand the business side and i'm still right. a creative to the heart i just had to like put on a business hat mm -hmm. and understand that you know this is going to allow me to do the things that i love to do but i got to understand this part so that you're not taking advantage of you know you you're understanding contracts you may not be able to afford an attorney right, right. Right. but at least you understand a lot of the the terms where you're not getting done wrong and i think you know at the end of the day you should be getting paid just like if you work, you should be able to get paid for right, it. If right. you do music, same thing, you know? So that's that's kind of my, my mentality. Any questions you'd like to have, Mr. Sidney? Oh, well. Awfully quiet you know, there. Oh, no, no. <laughs> the studio with this gentleman right here, working on a track with one of my artists, uh, Joshua. I don't yes. know what he's doing right now. Josh but, uh, Earth, he's always busy, boy. <laughs> he's always busy. That's doing... in that nice that, that Nights Carvette. Corvette's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah, we worked on a track with him for a while. But uh, this is my boy right here. Been around a long time, been around a lot of people, and he's good people. And I appreciate you coming down and joining us. We still got the raw science to go to, and yes. uh, we really appreciate you coming with us and being here with Behind the Groove and the Wish Bus. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us. Absolutely. And much love, my brother. I want to give a shout out. Can I give a shout of out? Course, so of course. I want to give a shout out to my beautiful wife. She's standing right there. There she is. Hey, why is Cynthia it? Jackson. Cynthia. She has a business called Raw uh, Raw Jackson. She's a um, a raw food chef and a vegan chef. Oh, okay. So she cooks good, real nice meals. <laughs> and up to my daughter Genesis, she is right on the precipice of entering college. Mm -hmm. And UCLA is one of her top choices. And she got some other lists. So she's last semester in high school. Give a shout out to her. And then all of the young people that I work with, I have an artist development company, and I just want to show them love and let them know they can do whatever they put their minds to. And if they put God first and keep God first, God right. will bless them Definitely. in ways that they have no idea. Uh, no because man even can. if you no think you can. can't do something, yeah, as long as you think you're not alone, absolutely, it will happen. Absolutely. If it's meant to happen, it will happen. That's right. Yes. That's right. Thank so. you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, well, thank you. thank you so much for joining us on the Wish Bus. Thank you. Yeah. What's up, Wishers? It is I, DJ Tej, and we are here on Wish Bus USA. Also, if you guys are not aware, the bus is parked in front of the Ace Hotel for the fifth annual Raw Science Film Festival. Joining me here to help interview is Sydney. So, again, wishers, this is Sydney. Hey, wishers. And once again, we have another guest with us on the bus. I don't know if you guys know who this is because I do know who this is. <laughs> Please introduce yourself to our wishers. Hi, I'm Richie Onori from the group Sweet Ballroom Blitz. <laughs> yes, yes. So, please tell us how. what is your experience as a musician? Uh, well, I've been in it for many, many decades. I started off at, with drums, mm -hmm. and that's what I play with Sweet. And uh, basically, now I play guitar. I'm a songwriter, singer. I pretty much do it all. And I've played with so many different, different, different types of music, from funk with Brothers Johnson to Toto, working with Bobby Kimball to Keith Emerson from Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. And now I'm in Sweet. And, 
just music, music, music has been my life, yeah. Do you dream music too? I do. Oh, I do. really? In fact, I just wrote a song the other night. I just woke up out of it and I wrote a really, it's called Song for Mankind. Oh. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So I, I do dream it. What's the genesis of that? <laughs> well, it's about uh, what's happening in our world. And we have to be very aware of what is happening. That's and it's, we have to unify as a people because we're very divided and conquered. And there's a reason for that. So we have to learn to hold each other's hands, come together as brothers and sisters. And that's what the whole song's about. Yeah, work together. Yeah, work together. Yeah, unite. I like that. Yeah. You got a song called Freedom, don't you? Well, I have, a, I have a rock musical, which rock. we've staged three times. It's oh, called okay. Freedom, a Rock Prophecy. And that is the topic. It's all about what's happening, uh, you know, about what's going on. There's certain people that uh, suppress people. And this is about the good people coming together with the wavelength of music and how we can overcome, you know, all the, the difficulties that society's having right. with music. Right. Definitely. So the music... music the soul, the heart of the soul. That's right. The music. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I think you guys have a, you have a group called The Messenger? Is it? Is it's it? the, it's the Blues Messenger. It's The Blues Messenger. So I consider myself The Blues Messenger. So it has that bluesy kind of a rock thing, but it goes into so many different kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And so we cover these issues on thebluesmessenger.com. A lot of the issues that we're addressing in the rock opera, in the band that I'm playing live, and all that. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. That's right. Um, I just had a question. Yes. So for the up and coming artists of this age, because it's very different from the music that my parents used to listen to. Mm -hmm. um, what would you like? Is there something you'd like to tell people who are aspiring to become musicians in this time? considering it's very different from how it was before, or is it not as different as we think it is? Well, I think playing musically or organically and creating it because it's so, things have changed so much towards computers, so it's important to go back to the blues artists, right. listen to where music came from, and you know, from the, from the cotton fields all the way into, and because that was the soul. I think with a lot of the music out there today, it doesn't have the same soul, and people, there's one thing with creating music on computers, but it's also the content of what people are saying and how they're presenting it. So organically, it's very important for people to go back into our history and recreate that into society, because that's why that's why some songs that are older really hit you in the stomach, where a lot, a lot of, not saying that there's great new music, don't get me wrong, but I would say that just listen and, you know, pack a big lunch as an artist. Uh, because it's a long road, and when you're an artist, you have to be very dedicated, and things can happen very quickly, or sometimes it doesn't. Right. So it's just, you go in for the right reason and the right purpose. If it's your purpose, do it. Never give up. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean unless do you, you change say there's like a certain <laughs> Is there like a certain point in the whole musical career when you're trying to get somewhere in the music industry? Is there a certain point where you should tell yourself, okay, I don't think this is for me? Um, is there a point where you should actually give up and look for a different career? Well, there's nothing wrong with doing different careers while you're pursuing your dreams. And so it's hard to disperse your, uh, your time, but you can do it. And I've done it at certain times. There's peaks and valleys uh, when it comes to the music business. It's a marathon. And it, yeah, <laughs> right. it's a marathon. It doesn't matter if you have some success and then it goes away. You're in it for the long run. And if you're an artist, a true artist, you just, you live for that passion, and that's what separates the men from the boys, or however you want to say it. Yeah. Yes. That's the tea, sis. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I find that interesting also because it's similar to what um, our first guest on the bus said, if it's your passion, you should definitely follow it. And I guess that's the same thing here too, considering the fact that even if you feel like you're already, like if you're in a stump, I guess, because I know that there are some musicians who get this one song and it becomes really famous and then you don't hear for them for a long time. That's right. And then when you think they're finally died out, they send in another song and they become this whole sensation again. So I guess, is, is that one of those factor things where they just keep living it, keep going for it? It's like with anything, you look, it, it's called the music business for a reason because it's a business. And I don't care if you're selling coconuts or whatever, 
you ha there's a certain uh, shelf life right. for whatever that is. So you're always reinventing yourself into new things. And if it if it encroaches into actually playing music or being a singer or songwriter or owning a music company or whatever that is, you're talk you know you're basically doing that, and you never know what the future may hold because next thing you know you might be on stage in front of. Uh, you know, thousands of people and you don't expect it. In life, it's not totally predictable. You try to be at cause over things, but you know, not always. <laughs> right. um, you have to leave here, I know that. Um, yeah. I believe you're going to NAM? Na NAM show. The NAM National show. National Association right. of Musical Merchandisers. They, right. They're in Anaheim, California. Everybody comes from all over the world. Yep. yep. What are you gonna do there? We're actually playing a concert uh, with my group, Sweet. We'll be doing Ballroom Blitz, Fox on the Run, Little Willie, Love is Like Oxygen, all the hits. Uh, you know, we uh, sweet, we, we toured with Journey with Arnell, and we did South America together, and so we play with everybody. Last year we did 60 shows, so tonight we're being featured at NAM, and we're playing, and then they're putting together the David Lee Roth band right after us. Everybody's playing this thing, and you got Steve Vai and Greg Bissonette, in the band and wow. uh, and Billy Sheehan, you know. Everybody so wants to be there after it's, here. It's going to be a hang. I'm going from this red carpet of your wonderful film festival Thank here, you. and I'm going right to there. And uh, I wished I would, you know, I have I can clone myself, but I can't tonight. Oh, but man. I'll have to watch the video next time. <laughs> yeah. Science, we're doing it right now. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining us on the Wish Bus. Was there any last final or few shout outs you'd like to give before we let you off the bus? Just, uh, we all need to change the world. And so I do have a interesting platform with thebluesmessenger.com. And I ask everybody to go to that, check it out. And if they're in agreement about a lot of the same issues that we're not divided on, mm -hmm. so we all come to agreement, there are solutions, and I think all of us reaching out in so many other dimensions of, of what you, you know, everybody does with charity and all that, we need to all come together. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the Wish Bus.